to the show. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. Hey, did you know that we were all born craving sugar? Yes. Yeah, it's, the, it's the one thing that we're born with that we all of us crave a certain amount of sugar. And it used to be only uh, luxury, you know, for the rich years ago. Matter of fact, 1700s would cost, and that's a long time ago, five bucks for like an ounce of sugar in London, you know, for that tea stuff. Huh. <laughs> Now we can uh, afford a little bit more and we consume, listen to this, we consume on an average here in this country 43 pounds of sugar a year. Wow. You imagine that? Should be walking around like <laughs> peanut brittle, you know? Well, we're gonna uh, show you a few different things tonight with sugar. So we're gonna use it from Gravlox to coffee, but let me tell you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you how to make vanilla bean sugar. I've shown you a few times before, excellent way to flavor your cakes and lots of different things. And we're gonna use that in our first dish in a pomegranate, cause it's that time of the year. I'm gonna show you how to make a pomegranate mojito. Ooh. Oh yeah, babe. <laughs> and then of course, always during uh, holidays and after holidays, any time of the year really, I'm gonna show you how to make a great Gravlox using a combination of sugar and salt. And then a wonderful palm sugar, it's a different type of sugar, and I'll tell you about that, palm sugar salad that we're gonna do with shrimp in this Thai dressing I'm gonna show you, that's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Doc Gibbs and the Ember Live Band! <laughs> yes, indeed. And then to kind of wrap things up, not that we want to do that, but we're going to wrap things up with an, an excellent dessert. I'm going to show you a very simple apple coffee cake with a beautiful brown sugar sort of topping because it's sweet. <laughs> and it's sugars tonight right here on Emerald Live. <laughs> Well, I come over here to little sugar. These are all basically all different types of sugars. Little cake, sh cake sugars, look at that. It looks like a piece of pie, huh? That's hard. And confectionery sugar, very popular. Granulated sugar, of course, brown sugar. And there are different types of sugars based on the process because sugar comes from sugar cane. And uh, a lot in Louisiana we have, a lot in my friends over in Hawaii. And then the sugar has to be boiled, and as they boil the process, that's really sort of what separates the different textures of that. Then, of course, there's sugar in the raw, one of my favorites, brown sugar. And then before they, when they really cook it, then that's when you basically get molasses. So it's really the basis of so many products if you really think about what's in sugar. So I want to show you a little sugar that I really over the years have just loved. I take regular granulated sugar. You know that stuff that you buy for 89 cents a bag or whatever. And one of the wonderful things you can do is make this vanilla bean sugar. Um, generally what I do is I wait for a dish that I'm gonna use, let's just say a creme brulee, and I wanna use vanilla bean inside of the creme brulee. And as you guys know, van vanilla beans are very expensive. And um, so what I do is I scrape, well, let me show you. When you buy a vanilla bean like this, it should be sort of plump, should smell like vanilla. That would be like the, you know, the first thing <laughs> kind of that, you know, trips the old mind off. And a lot of people don't know uh, because they're just so used to using the bottle stuff. And if you're gonna do that, make sure it's pure. What they don't know is the flavor of the vanilla particularly for pastries and some savory di dishes. Like I love to make a vanilla bean sauce uh, and serve it with shellfish, like lobster or scallops. It's a really wonderful. But what people don't realize, inside of this pod, you have to split the pod in half, okay? So you have to split the pod in half. 
And then what people really don't realize is that inside of this pod is where all of the sugar and all of the vanilla, you see that right there? That's all of the vanilla flavor, okay? So if you make an ice cream, that's what you want. But then when you do that, you have this left over that if you don't cook it in the ice cream, or even if you do, or your creme brulee, there's still an, an incredible amount of flavor that's in here. So what I tell people to do to get sort of the double bang for the buck, use the inside of the vanilla bean for your custard or ice cream or your creme brulee or whatever you're going to use, then take this inside of a jar, and I have some of these from another one that I did, okay? And then fill it with sugar. And basically, every now and then, maybe in the morning while you're having coffee or whatever, or in the evening, you can just shake your jar to disperse what bean is left. And then you have your own vanilla bean sugar. So then now what happens is like when you want to bake and you want to maybe for your tea or coffee, a little bit of this and you have vanilla bean sugar and it's absolutely a wonderful, wonderful taste. So that's about vanilla bean sugar. The awesome kitchen staff here at Food Network, we made this a few days ago, knowing that you were all coming tonight. <laughs> and I'm going to show you a great sort of South American cocktail that I absolutely love. I take some mint leaves, and particularly around holiday times, uh, for me it's any time really, it's, you know, why wait? <laughs> yeah, it's, I feel the same way about turkey, it's like why wait till Thanksgiving to eat turkey, right? Eat turkey year round, fry it and do all kinds of great things. So anyhow, we got the, the old, uh, and I want to just kind of muddle this a little bit, muddle. I wonder where they came with these terms, you know? How would you get that, you know? A stick and a glass and some mint. We're muddling here. So we're just gonna muddle this a little bit right now, breaking down the flavors of the mint. So we've got that step done. Now, during this time of the year, you can buy pomegranate juice because pomegranates are available. Those are those ones with all the big red seeds. I used to love waiting for those to come out. So I take some pomegranate juice. <laughs> and just a little bit of rum. <laughs> and let's see, do we have any... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> then I got a little club soda. Optional, of course. <laughs> Just to get it a little bubble like that. And what I'll generally do is put a little club soda in the... Let that sort of fizz our mint that we just muddled. <laughs> then I take a little bit of that wonderful vanilla sugar. See how it's kind of gotten gotten that color now, we'll add a little bit into this. Yeah, we'll add a little more. Why not? What's a little vanilla sugar amongst friends? Hopefully we can shake this just a little bit. Generally they freeze up on me. You know, I'm busy talking, la 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 la, then you can't get the thing apart. Like now. So you can either strain this as such, or you can serve it with the ice cubes if you like. And if you want more color, what I'll show you for a wonderful mojito. Oh yeah, babe. Now, if you want more color, what you can always do is just come right back on the top Add a little bit more for that pomegranate flavor. And there you have it, a little pomegranate mojito. Let me know if you need some ice in there. Hey, look, we're just getting started with sugars. When we come back, another notch! Knock it!
Wolf on keyboards, Lewis on the horns, Teddy on drums, and Doc Gibbs. One of my favorite things to uh, kind of do with a little combination of sugar is uh, a little curing in a dish called Gravlox. And uh, we have these a lot on our menus in the restaurants and especially around the holiday times, special times, anniversary, birthdays. This is a wonderful dish that you can do in advance and a wonderful dish that you can serve in many different ways, whether you serve it traditionally with uh, little uh, traditional garnishes or you kick it up with caviar or you can slice it and put it on pizza. But Gravlox, it's a cured mostly salmon dish and uh, one of my all-time favorites. So the other great thing about this is that you can do this and serve 25 plus people um, with this for a, you know a family event. We'll go and buy a piece or a side of salmon. Okay, so if you don't, if you want to do this in smaller quantity, you can just you can do a piece of this, a third, a half, or whatever. But it's got to be whole. And then the other thing you want to make sure that it's super fresh, and that it also has the skin on it, because it's an important thing for this process that we're going to do of curing it. Okay, you with me so far? Yeah. All right, now, we're gonna take some of that vanilla bean sugar that we made, and we're gonna use some of this vanilla bean sugar. Mm. So we got that nice vanilla bean flavor. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add kosher salt, okay? Which is a great thing about curing it and to cure foods. Cracked black pepper. Now, traditionally, fresh dill is used. I've done combinations of this where I've used basil. I've used combinations where I've used cilantro and more Southwest flavors if you want that route. I've also done uh, more with Asian flavors or Chinese spice if you want to go that direction. But the salt-sugar combination is very, very important. This is more traditional, like you'd find in Scandinavia. A little bit of orange peel, or you could use lemon peel as well. So that's the ingredients. I mean, it's not like we're building a rocket ship here or anything. You want to mix all these ingredients around together. And then the pot is easy. So you have this wonderful salt. Oh, can you smell that vanilla? It smells great, doesn't it? And the dill and the pepper and a little bit of the orange peel. And now we're ready to start curing the fish. Now, the best way to do this, you want to take your fish after you've washed it, dried it properly, is to have another sheet where you can overlap some saran, some of this plastic wrap stuff, right? And lay the salmon down, skin side down. It's important. Skin side down. And then the next great thing to do, we're going to put this a little sideways, sideways, since this is a nice piece of, there we go. Nice piece of salmon. Now watch what we're going to do. We're going to take our mixture that we made, and we're going to start sprinkling it on the flesh of the salmon. Gravlox. Okay, now we've done that. You want to make sure that you spread evenly. You can do this with your hands. You don't want to really see any of the flesh of the fish. So you want to make sure that the flesh of the fish is covered, just like I'm doing here. Then, once it's covered, now you can use your hands and just sort of pat it so that it sort of makes like, you know, like a crust, if you will. With me like that so far? All right. Now, you want to fold this wrap over to really enclose the salmon like a package. Okay, and it shouldn't have any air spots. Just keep using your hand. Wrap it just as tightly as you can like a package. I'm even going to go under 
the skin of this to totally enclose this here, okay? And if you're unsure, just wrap it again in plastic. You're not going to hurt, hurt it. You can add another layer. Now, here's the thing. What you need to do is you want to force and you want to press this sugar-salt mixture into the flesh, which is going to start cooking the fish. And this process for a side of salmon takes about 24 to 30 hours. But in order to do that, and you just do it in the ice box. So what I do is I just take another pan to give it some weight. Then I take, you know, whatever you got in the pantry. So I'm going to just sort of put this in the ice box like such. Clear out a little space. Make sure it's sort of even. Then I'm going to weight it down. I, if you don't have any of these, just go get a couple of bricks from the backyard. <laughs> See, I've got it weighted down like that now. And as I said, 24 to 30 hours for the curing process, okay? When we come back, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Stick around, knock it! <laughs> Lewis on horns, Teddy on drums, and Doc Gibbs, everybody. Yeah. Emma Lagasse here. If you're just joining us, shame on you. S sweeten it up a little bit here. And we just did a little sweet and salty combo, making a little traditional grav locks. Everybody's with me here, right? Yeah. 24, 30 hours, folks. Okay? Right in between there. You want to then remove... Not that you have to serve it, because this is one of those things that you can now still keep it wrapped in plastic for a couple of days, but you've got to take the salt-sugar solution off 24 to 30 hours. It is cured. If you leave it on, it'll just continue to keep cooking the fish. So the best way is to do this, unwrapping it, and then sort of scraping off the sugar and salt mixture. What a lot of people do is what they'll do is they'll begin to wash this under cold, cold water. And they'll keep washing it and washing it and washing it instead of scraping it. And basically what they've done is they've diluted the flavor of the Gravlox. So try to scrape like this, like I'm doing, as much of it as you can. And then you can just sort of run it real quick underneath there. And you're ready for the next shot, which I'm going to show you. You get it on a cutting board, as we've already done here, and you begin to make slices. And I'm going to show you how to do that. You remember I told you earlier about the skin? You see, we're taking very thin pieces to the skin, and then we're just sort of following it up, so then you have a nice piece of Gravlox like that. Now you can roll them, you can put some cream cheese in them, you can do all kinds of things with it. They're great in salads. Now, let me show you the traditional garnish of this. Generally, some sort of brown bread. That's what we have right here. We have a little brown bread. Generally, there's a, traditionally, there's a, an option of either like a Poupon mustard, a Dijon mustard, or sour cream, depending on what you like. So we'll put a little sour cream. And we'll put a little mustard, just for a little combo. Then, 
some little bit of red onion, sometimes a little dill, and then you take a piece of the Gravlox, and I just sort of roll it up like this, right on top. See, and it makes a wonderful little canopy if you want to serve it like that. Now, if you want to even kick it up another notch, then what I would recommend to you is this. After you make all your little toasts like this, and they're served room temperature, kick it up. I just add another dollop of sour cream. Then I get some of that wonderful salmon caviar, that salmon roe caviar, and you put a little bit of that, and you can kick it up a little notch like that, okay? So there's one. Hey, it's a, it's, a, no, it's a normal bite, you know. <laughs> so I'll show you one more of those. We'll take a little sour cream again, a little Dijon, and some red onion. Roll it up. This time I'm going to make it a little different. This time I'm going to add just a little bit of the sour cream like such. And then I'll take a little piece of the mint in case any of those don't like caviar. Okay? And then you can kind of make these before your guests come, your family comes. And a wonderful canapé, a wonderful first course, and a great, great dish. Salmon grab locks for the family. So I hope you enjoy it, folks. <laughs> I'm going to show you a quick, quick salad, at least for me, using palm sugar. This is palm sugar used in a lot of Thai and Asian cooking. Basically, the syrup from the buds of the cane, they'll clip and extract the sugar on a daily basis, okay, not to get so technical. Then they'll take this stuff back and in, in a vat or even in woks, they'll cook it down almost to like it gets the molasses stage. Then they take it out of that and put it sort of on parchment or saran paper, and it crystallizes. Then they grind it, and they call it palm sugar. So we're going to use a little bit of this palm sugar with some shrimp. Got some beautiful shrimps right here, some shrimps. And we're going to use some salt for them shrimps <laughs> and some cayenne pepper to kick it, kick it up in a little notch. Now, we're going to let these shrimps get happy for a minute, and then I'm going to show you a quick little dressing, okay? We're going to take the juice of about three limes, some cilantro, some chili peppers, a little bit of red onion. <laughs> Got to have some garlic in there, right? And some more, some more of that palm sugar. We're going to just put that in a blender real quick. And then what we're going to do is this. We're going to take some fish sauce, better known as knock mom. <laughs> hey, I didn't make it up. It's the real deal. It's fish sauce. It's kind of salty. So we're not going to add any salt until we taste this thing. <laughs> and then we're going to use a little oil. You could use peanut oil, corn oil, canola oil, whatever you want. What we're going to do is we're quickly going to make this into a little, a little dressing. Now, we got our dressing. We need to taste it. Let's see if we need... Woo-woo! Woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo! <laughs> Oh, yeah, babe. All right. I'm going to take a little oil now inside of our wok. And what we're going to do is just sort of wok fry real quick these wonderful shrimp that have the cayenne salt and... All right, so I'm going to stir fry these. I got cucumber, mango, red onion, green onion. When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Stick around. Yeah.
All right, Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Eye Band. Hey, folks, while we were on a commercial break, welcome back, everybody. Emerald Lagasse here, and we're uh, just kicking it up with sweet things tonight. And uh, while we went on the commercial break, I took the shrimp out of the wok. Didn't want you to miss anything here. This is really a fantastic, fantastic dish. So I just added them back in there. So I've got the shrimp wok in here. I got this incredible dressing that I made with fish sauce and chilies, cilantro, lime juice. It's a, it's a little kick to it. Now, here's what we're going to do. I've got some bib lettuce that I cleaned, took the core out, and I'm going to show you a little trick. This is a great family, family dish that you can do, a family salad to take to the table. A couple of bib lettuces, take the core out, and you just... <laughs> okay? So there's that. Then, we're going to take a little bit of salt and just kind of salt that. I have some cucumbers that I've seeded. Yeah, for a reason. Skinned them, peeled them. I've got salt in there. And what I'm going to do is just add a little bit at a time, a little bit of that dressing. You with me so far? So now I'm going to take the cucumbers here, toss with a little salt, pepper, make a little mound of those in the center. Okay? It's got the seeded cucumbers there now. Then, I'm going to take red onions or shallot, a little more, I got a little mint and some green onions. I'm going to add a little bit of the dressing to that. <laughs> Keep walking them shrimp. By the way, the shrimp, we had salt, cayenne, and that palm sugar. Now we're going to take the red onion, green onion, a little bit of that mint mixture, and we're just going to do this to it. Little there, little over here, little for my friends there and over there, and over here and over there, and it doesn't have to be complicated. You with me so far? All right. Now, I've got some mangoes. You could use papaya, and I'm just going to put a few of these slices here and there. Looks pretty good already. Now, we take the shrimp after they're nice and walked. We're just going to put some of those right on here. And a few like over here. And a few like just kind of over here. Okay? You with me so far? Yeah. Then we're going to take this awesome dressing that we made. And we're just going to kind of do a little bit of that like that on the shrimp, okay? And on the bib lettuce, you could do that when you show up at the party. A little bam, bam, just like that. There you have it. There you have it. All right. Then you could say it walked for me. Now, inside of this, I want to show you another thing that we're going to make with some sugars. This one's going to be with a little bit of light brown sugar, which I think is really great for, for baking. One other thing, folks, you could always take a little bit of that palm sugar right at the end and just kind of do a little sprinkle like that, and it would really make the salad 100 on the scale, okay? Now, we blended some sweet butter so that it was soft. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use this technique called creaming, which is used in baking, which means that we're going to cream now the sugar in with the butter. See, I like these folks, nice folks. You know, that's why I only, I'm on two. <laughs> Jack it up to 10. Oh. Now, once the sugar gets incorporated there, what we're going to do is we're going to add the eggs. This is where I tell people that they really need to scrape the bowl down so that they don't have, in the end of their cake batter, lumps. So take the, take the time, scrape it down off the sides. You'd be surprised how much butter has kind of got stuck there. 
All right. Now, we've got that going on. Next thing, I got a little parchment paper here. I got flour, baking powder, baking soda, and some cinnamon. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're just going to sift that. Make sure we get the lumps out of there, those guys. Plus, you want to aerate your flour a little bit. Once that's mixed, what we're going to do, I just come over here like this and add the dry ingredients. See? Right into the, right into the bowl like this. Then again, Okay, nice folks, slowly, Keep it off just slowly like that, incorporate it. I took some wonderful, whatever sweet apple that you can get, it just doesn't have to be Granny Smith, so that's time of the year right now. Smell it, does it smell like an apple? That's a good indication that maybe it'll be good. I don't know about you, I go to the supermarket, I'm smelling food in every aisle. They don't like it, the heck with them. Now, I got some diced apple that we're going to add in there. And then I've got some sour cream. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> now, this is going to be for our cake and a little bit of vanilla. Going to add that up there. Again, nice people here. All right, so that's that. Now, folks, real quick, I've got flour, brown sugar, a little cinnamon, and some soft butter, unsweetened butter. I'm going to add those four ingredients together to make a topping. Put the cake batter in the topping, set the oven on 350, 360 degrees. While I'm making the topping to go on top of the batter, before we bake it, well, I'll tell you what. When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Doc Gibbs, everybody! on horns, Teddy on drums, and on the Greek of drum, Doc Gibbs. 350 degrees, the oven is set. We poured that apple cake in the pan. It's been lightly buttered. Now we're going to take the brown sugar topping, okay? And you're going to sprinkle it generously. Now, the great thing is, is you bake this for about 40 minutes. But it can't just, like, leave it alone, you know? <laughs> so, once it bakes, what I do, I mean, this is delicious for breakfast. But just say you, like, want to maybe do something different with it for dessert. I take more brown sugar with a little vanilla and some water. Just that simple. And just stir it like that till the sugar's dissolved. Now, what you can do, you can just take a little cluster of grapes, dip them inside of this mixture, then dip them in granulated sugar, and you got wonderful little grapes like that, sugared grapes. Then, quickly, I just take a little fork like, uh, a fork like this, and the rest of this, I just sort of do this to it. Now, if it's, uh, you know, maybe one of those adult parties, maybe you want to add a little rum or something in there, you know? <laughs> now we're going to cut a little square. 
<laughs> Watch how moist this is. See how moist that is? See the inside of that? Look at that. Because of the apples, okay? Wonderful little dessert. You can put a little dollop of whipped cream, garnish with like just a little bit of orange peel like that, okay? And just a little bam, 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 bam. Just kind of. So we've taken the uh, coffee cake to the dessert level. Do you like gingerbread? I know, I love gingerbread. Watch this, I've got some butter that we're creaming. Easy. Once it's creamed down, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use this sugar in the raw kind of thing, right? This type of sugar to cream it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add one egg at a time for this batter. This is a very unusual but simple gingerbread. Now, inside of the flour, I've got allspice, baking soda, ginger, not Mary Ann, ginger, <laughs> a little salt, a little cinnamon, and some fresh grated nutmeg. You with me so far? Now, sift that all together. Then, that's my dry ingredients. My wet ingredients now, I'm gonna scrape the bowl down. I'm gonna add a heaping cup of Guinness beer and a heaping cup of molasses. Then I'm gonna add the dry ingredients in there. When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Stick around, Doc Gibbs. Sugars, sugars, and sugars, and now this gingerbread. 350 degrees for the gingerbread. Put the Guinness, put the molasses in, okay, after the eggs and the sugar in the raw cream and that flour mixture. Make sure you scrape down the sides, and look, you'll have a more runnier type batter, okay? And those granules you're seeing there is a lot from the sugar, but good color for a gingerbread. 350 degrees, bake that in the old oven for about 25 minutes. And then let me show you, you'll see how dense it gets from that, all those sugars. Look at that, huh? What I like to do is I just take a little bit of piece like this for the kids, a little square like that, it's very moist, let it cool a little bit. Oh yeah, look at that, babe, huh? And then what I do is I just take, you can either just melt some vanilla ice cream or well, what I do is made a beautiful creme anglaise with that vanilla sugar that we made earlier. And I just sort of drizzle that around and drizzle it like sort of like that. And then I sugar the strawberry with some of that vanilla sugar as well. A little bit of mint. Bam! Bam! And there you have it, a little sugar gingerbread. Unbelievable. Hey, I'm Emeril Lagasse. I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. See you tomorrow, everybody! Yeah.